Filmation made a sequel to Snow White not once, but twice! The first one being a holiday flavored one. A Snow White Christmas. A Snow White Christmas. A Snow White Christmas. Filmation was a funny company. Al says to me, he says, Lou, what are we going to call the company? I said, we'll call it Film Filmation. It's half film, half animation. He said, do you think that's a name? I said, well, it doesn't sound great, but who cares? And a really funny project that Filmation stirred was sort of sequels to Disney movies. Of course, legally, these were sequels to the original fairy tales, but it wasn't hard to figure out that they were trying to make these seem like sequels to the Disney movies as close as they could without getting into legal trouble. That didn't work out though, as Disney did indeed sue Filmation after their Pinocchio sequel, Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night. That didn't work out for Disney, though, as they kind of don't own Pinocchio. And really, I think Filmation's Pinocchio was their sequel movie that seemed the farthest away from Disney's out of the three pseudo-sequels Filmation made. The other two both being Snow White. These are two different, unconnected continuations of Snow White as well. The first one, A Snow White Christmas, being done in 1980. And the non-Christmas one was done in 1989, though it wasn't released until 1993, which also ended up being Filmation's last release. Our story picks up where the Grimm's fairy tale ended, and so naturally, we call it Snow White. The adventure continues. And it wasn't called that. Filmation presents Snow White in the Land of Doom. And it wasn't called that either. It ended up with the title Happily Ever After. In a kind of funny full circle moment in 1987, Disney actually released their own version of A Snow White Christmas in book form. Anyway, over in Eternia, we meet the new Snow White voiced by Erica Scheimer, Lou Scheimer's daughter. And she kind of looks like a cross between Judy Jetson and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Guess she's got white hair because they wanted to be more on the nose with the snow thing. I love the ice festival every year. It's so much fun. Yes, Snow White. Silence, peon! Oh boy, I can't wait to see what I get in my stocking. <laughs> I love pretending to care about any of this shit. What did you get last year? Nothing. Everything fell through the holes in the toes. This elf wannabe servant guy's name is Grunion. Yes, really, Grunion. Grunt Onion Boy works directly for the royalty! And they pay him so poorly he can't afford stockings without holes in them. Also, Snow White couldn't care less as she doesn't even acknowledge Grunion's sad state of affairs. Mother, father, may I join in the festival for a while? So, Snow White having living parents might seem kind of odd as they were usually sort of kind of dead so that Snow White would end up with her stepmother, the evil queen. Well, it turns out this is not the Snow White from the original fairy tale. This is her mother, and the main character of this movie is actually little Snow White Jr. Look at little Snow White Jr. Gonna cry? Every day is Christmas, having Snow White for a daughter. Doubly so for me, having two Snow Whites. Two Snow Whites. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, Grunion, your page just got halved again. And I'm going to eat you! It's Christmas! <laughs> so... Why is there snow pink? <laughs> Grunion is so stupid. I can cut other Wabu. Bust his ass wide open. Snow White Jr. and company seem very concerned as Grunion falls down the hill until they are sure that he sustains massive injury. Then they all laugh. <laughs> ah! 
No, really, I didn't even have to edit this as they legit just laugh at Grunion's pain. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Hey, they're laughing at your pain. That's me. Also, I didn't realize until this moment that King Charming and the OG Snow White had their thrones outside in the middle of town for some reason. I guess it's so they can mock the little people like Grunion. Obviously, that's the lesson Snow White should have learned after having dwarves save her ass. Grunion has started off the season's festivities with a gift of laughter for us all. You are brutal, Snow White. I declare Grunion to be forever forth known as the Pope of Fools. You exist to be a punchline, Grunion. I want to be allowed to make the royal Christmas decree. I want to decree a new happiness for all of the children of Noel. My name's Noel, and I have a happiness. Oh, Noel, please shut up. That there be a Christmas castle where all of the children of Noel can go. You know, to get those filthy urchins off the streets. We could just make over that spooky, old, deserted castle. Perhaps we should not allow Snow White. We must, else we would have to explain about my wicked stepmother. I don't want her to know of such evil as I knew. Luckily, Snow White doesn't have a magic mirror on the wall to face the fact that her truth-hiding ass has become the new evil queen. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. I'm glad they hired a children's drawing to be their driver. In an utter twist of stupidity, Queen Snow White's prism umbrella reflects a sunbeam right to where the original Evil Queen was and thaws her out. You, of course, remember how the Evil Queen was frozen, right? I guess after the dwarves drove her off a cliff and a boulder fell on her, she also froze somehow. But hey, remember the two vultures that were following the queen around? Well, in a direct reference to the Disney one, here they are again! And uh, wow, that evil queen design is pretty blatant as well. Just, I guess her hair poofed up a bit more in her little cap. Ooh, evil Luckily for the original Evil Queen, no one has apparently messed with her castle after all these years. Be gone, scavengers! Even though the Queen tries to kill the vultures here, shortly after this, she has a perch for them to hang out on for some reason. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, the Evil Queen did the Mandela effect, mirror, mirror on the wall. I guess everyone just must have been remembering a Snow White Christmas. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is fairest of them all? That stupid queen in her alternate dimensions. And in what is probably the most blatant copying of the Disney version, the magic mirror's face is depicted as a drama mask. If Disney had gotten litigious about this one, they might have had more of a case. There are two equally fairer than all others. Two Snow Whites! Oh, come on! I was cryo-frozen for like 20 years! I should be fairer than old Snow White, at least! Ah, it's close! I'll update my top fairest of all list when I do a new video soon! So remember, Queen, to like and subscribe! Oh, shut up! Blow! Yes, we know, Evil Queen. It all blows. We better get back to the, the castle. Thank you for that. Where is Snow White? Grunion will get her home. Yes, let's leave her safety up to Grunion. Your charm is really all you had going for you, King Doofus. So, the Evil Queen's plan this time is just to freeze everyone in the entire Snow White Kingdom. Kinda seems like if she had that spell laying around, she could just use that last time instead of relying on an incompetent huntsman to kill Snow White. Run! Snow White! Find! Seven! Do 
obviously, she was gonna say Dwarf Giants. It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. No, no, not this one, though. It's Snow White and the Seven Giants. Kind of funny, both times Filmation stayed away from having the actual dwarves reappear in their Snow White continuations. So, in a Snow White Christmas, we get giants, and in Happily Ever After, it was the Dwarf Elves. <laughs> Look at little Snow White Jr. gonna cry. We're starting to freeze too! We are the only two not to have immediately frozen because there wouldn't be much of a movie otherwise. Little Snow White Jr. and Grunion slide out of World 6 Ice World and end up in World 4 Big Land. Giant Ho! Hey! You watch who you're calling a giant ho, Grunion! Considering Giant World is just down the hill from their kingdom, you think they would have at least heard of this place before? Oh! If it isn't dust in the house or wrinkles in my shorts, it's bugs in my tomatoes! Woo! Wow, a queer-coded character in a Filmation cartoon. That's so unlike them. And you know, these are apparently seven lifelong bachelors who all live together. They say they're brothers, but that's probably just a cover. We're not brothers. Them ain't bugs. What are they then, Corny? Corny. They seriously named one of the giants Corny. <laughs> Snow White Jr. Gonna cry? We are the seven friendly giants. Snow! Oh! We are the seven friendly giants. We love randomly singing about who we are all the time. We are the seven friendly giants. 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 Who the hell are they? We are the seven friendly giants. Oh, right, right. I almost missed that. Oh, that sounds scary, 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 scary. Oh good, I'm glad we got an oversized dopey bootleg who's drunky, apparently. Actually, his name is Hicker. You can decide if that's worse than naming him Drunky. Ages for Hicker, who is up so lot? After dancing around during their Let Us Beat Into Your Head That We Are The Seven Friendly Giants song, obviously Snow White Jr. and Grunion are scared once the song's over. Now, get this, the lumberjack giant is named Brawny. That's right, he's the original model for the paper towels or something. He's also our grumpy stand-in, as he hates the little people at first, but later comes around. Wicked Queen, could it be the same one our cousins? The dwarves? The dwarves are the giant's cousins? I don't want to know how that family works. Your mother's name, is it? The same as mine, Snow White. At least, her name was the same. Gonna cry. <laughs> the original Snow White is dead. Let us go into the house and become friends. I love that your mother is dead. Smile, smile. Now, mirror on the wall, say it. I am the fairest of them all. We've been doing this for so long. Please move on. You have only to go to the warm valley where live the seven giants. Once again, that magic mirror is a real snitch. <laughs> Oh sweet, a hoedown was the one thing I always thought was missing from Snow White. The giants decide to keep their new pets inside a clock, which is delightful apparently. This will be a fun home to live in. Will it really? A clock! A clock will be a fun home! I can't wait to sleep on gears with constant ticking and stupid grunting stinking up the place! Fun! But never as much fun as my real home with mother and father. Yeah, I suppose living in a clock is a slight downgrade from living in a palace. 
They at least get a matchbox with some feathers thrown in it to sleep on. We are seven fucking assholes. Sleep well the night, Snow White, or tomorrow. We shall meet! Yeah, you wouldn't want to kill her in her sleep. That'd be rude. Did you sleep well? Oh, yes! My matchbox bed was so comfortable! Then, in an utter baffling sequence, Grunion somehow manages to get beaten up and have his clothes stolen by the mechanical clock man. I don't know. Grunion was doing something gross, though, I'm sure. I was just having a dream about cheese. <laughs> oh, Grunion, will you ever have a point? Oh, powers of the East West. Poo, he said. I smell poo. Yes. And where is poo? There must be a farm. Bring a giant mouse for Yes, truly a mouse would be the most efficient way of taking Snow White out. It's not like you know a freeze everyone in an entire kingdom spell. Guess she can only use that once. That's funny. You're the only one who thinks so, Grunion. Surprisingly, Plan Mouse fails when the evil queen gets chewed away by a broom. A mouse who wasn't interested in cheese. It was the wicked queen. Seems like a bit of a leap there, but sure. <laughs> oh, weenie, you are no one's favorite giant. The queen's next hilarious prank is to drown everyone by melting the snow on the mountain above them. The mountain that she is currently standing on, which seems a little short-sighted, but even though she melts all the snow in the area, somehow it's still there where she's standing. Indeed, this is a very special homecoming for me! Of course it's for you! Who else's homecoming would this be? <laughs> Gonna cry, gonna cry, gonna cry, gonna cry. Mother and father and the people of Noel and and now them. This drama lasts for two seconds before the giants sit back up and say it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> I like this. Almost drowning is fun. This time, Nero, you have no chance. Tell me I am Ferris. If you watched what happened at all, Queen, you would have seen Snow White wasn't even close to drowning, you moron! The Queen then transforms the useless vulture duo into dragon things so they can distract hickers, which kind of seems like overkill when she probably could just walk straight past that wasted moron without the distraction. The Queen is now going for a classic, pretending to be an old woman with a poisoned treat, though this time it's K.O. flowers instead of apples. Why, you must be Snow White. Yes, and this is Grunion. I don't care who he is. Don't smell that flower, Snow White. It's boy. I didn't notice any of that somehow. The Queen gets Little Miss Junior with her prank flowers, and the elite guard Hickers still doesn't notice someone walking right past him. It was the Wicked Queen. Well, let's bury her in a shoebox out back. So, this one might seem familiar. Angered by Snow White's apparent death, the Evil Queen gets chased up a mountain. Though, instead of having a boulder backfire on her, the Queen just runs home. And then I guess the danger is over because she's reached home base so she can just slowly strut back in the castle. Let 
lightning and thunder rend the land and stop the giants where they stand. You probably don't want lightning. Remember what happened last time? Oh wait, that wasn't actually last time. Except it sort of kind of is. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, naturally, it's that mild inconvenience lightning. The giants continuing their little jog, though, completely ruins the lightning plan. My demons will stop them! The queen had demons this whole time?! I need to kill Snow White Jr! Obviously, Plan A will be turned into a mouse! My last resort will be my demon squad. Try my pets! <laughs> so get ready for the epic battle between giants and demons! Oh, just kidding, the demons take off once Hicker starts an earthquake with his stupid hiccups. Who knew the demon squad were such wieners? Maybe that's why the queen didn't want to tag them in. Mirror, help me! I must have more powers! Those powers shall consume me as it shall consume you! You, perhaps, but never me! I am you, my queen! I am you? What? Yeah, this is the super confusing end of the queen. It's like they forgot to write a death that made any kind of sense for her and then they're like, oh yeah, how do we get rid of her? I know, the mirror just says, he is her, then breaks, which of course causes the queen to melt into a puddle and then explode away. If the magic mirror was the queen, why didn't she just tell herself what she wanted to hear? It's really a classic undoing of yourself when you forget you are your magic mirror. Queen Zones was also a load-bearing queen, so that's the end of her castle as well. And because it's makes it easy time, her dying defrosts the old Snow White and her crew. Snow White! Something broke your wicked stepmother's spell over us. I'm sure Snow White has been spared too. Don't you ever get tired of being wrong all the time? Sometimes. Whatever the spell she cast on Snow White is forever. <laughs> Softly. Oh, the music, it's folksy and annoying. Oh, would that there were a prince to kiss life back into her. Get away from her, Grunion, you're too ugly. We'd rather she stay dead than kiss you. Ooh, she's sleeping. Yes, that is exactly what's happening on screen. Guess this is the literal music video. Ooh, she's sleeping, gently sleeping. Ooh, now she's waking up. Takes everyone a moment to notice. Whatever the spell she cast on Snow White is forever. Don't you ever get tired of being wrong all the time? Sometimes. So, you just have to assume that her parents' kiss brought her back as they don't bother to say why she woke up. You'd think they'd say, oh, the true love's kiss of her parents also worked or something, but nah. It's Christmas. I love that stupid Grunion has to sit on the floor by the thrones. I'm sure it's so the royalty can kick him when they're upset. The Wicked Queen's castle has been destroyed. I can't decree a Christmas castle now. Sure you can. Look. Oh, how did I miss that? Yay! Now all the kids can go into a castle and fend for themselves. 
I really don't know what the children are supposed to do with the castle, but that's a happy ending, supposedly. This is a pretty amusing Christmas version of Snow White. Very strange in parts, but clearly Filmation could come up with some interesting twists on these fairy tales. So I kind of wonder with their later movies like Pinocchio and Happily Ever After if they could have fared better had they just made their own continuity from the beginning instead of doing these weird pseudo-sequel things to Disney movies. I have only one last thing to tell you. I am you! The children froze to death in Snow White Jr.'s ill-thought-out Kid Castle. Oh, Kid Castle was a big mistake, but she'll get away with it, cause she's royalty!